I convinced my boss the other day at work that if I did not get at least an 8.3% pay increase this year, I took a pay cut. She goes, how is it that you get more money, yet you take a pay cut? And I said, well, due to inflation rates being at 8.2 over last year, same time frame. I said, that means if I make the same amount of money this year as I did last year, I actually took a pay cut. Yeah, not to mention sometimes, like, there's subtle, like, cuts or changes in benefits. Oh, yeah. You know, like, yeah. like, like. Since Obamacare came out? Uh, uh, this happens all the time, regardless of who is in, in, in office. But if your health insurance policy changes, then, then uh, you know, it, it's not. It's fifty dollars more a month this year, but the coverage is less. Wow. Yeah. yeah? And wow. well, yesterday I we're, we have a new <laughs> prescription plan here, and yesterday I went to pick up a prescription, and it was like that'll be fifty three dollars, and it was like, <gasps> and then like. Wait a minute, they probably have my old prescription card and saw that it had expired or whatever. I'm like, I have a new prescription card? And they went through, it's like, okay, five bucks. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> boy, that was, that was a relief. So, uh, speaking of the government screwing us all over, uh, you can actually go, it's, no, it's really important that everybody do this. The FCC is trying to, uh, what is it, regulate the internet now? Oh, yeah, right, right, right. right. You can actually go on fcc.gov forward slash comments for the next 120 days and post what you think if the FCC should do it or should not do it. So far, they've gotten like 3 million, no, you shouldn't, and I think two have said yes, which is... Or, uh, yeah, right, which is, which is exactly. Yeah, Mr. Time, and, Time and, and Mr. Warner. Yeah, they, right. they, they said yes, and then uh, who's the other guy that owns the monopoly? The other Murdoch? No, there's Comcast. another uh, Comcast. Yeah, so Comcast yeah. and Time Warner are like, yeah, let's do this. This sounds awesome. Right. And then everybody else is like, oh. well, there's already people that sus that suspect that that they're doing it anyhow. Yeah. Like you know, like if your Netflix stream all of a sudden goes slow, yep. or you're watching videos on YouTube and all that. That's one that I can say in my mind transcends political affiliation. And and I am definitely um, I am definitely uh, against anything that would remove the openness from the internet. Yeah. Well, and you know what's funny is you know who Obama just appointed to um, head of FCC. Somebody watches John Oliver. Wow. Is, no, it, yeah, but yeah, uh, he, he did go over this, but he just he appointed the, uh, the lobbyist, the head of the lobbyist committee for Comcast as his FCC head guy. So basically, the guy that was trying to pay people to vote yes on this is now in charge of it. Isn't that, uh, isn't that awesome? Um, at this point, we will talk about JavaScript. <laughs> All right. The question came up in lab last time. And let, let me show you the problem first, and then we'll address the question. Maybe. I think I deleted the wrong view. The solution explorer. Yeah, there we go. So let's fire this guy up. And I I don't know if it's the stuff in the air because it's fall and leaves dying and there's molds and crap in the air. Or I had a bad habit of laying finished ice packs from my hip on the floor. All right, and they would leak a little bit, so my carpeting got a little mildewy. So I went and bought and like mega dosed it with Glade yesterday, but I can't breathe now. All right, so <laughs> if you see me turn blue and go out, and my eyes are like like burning. So uh, I took some Sudafed. Hopefully that will work. I, I'm not sure if that would what I needed or if I needed an antihistamine. So if you but fall asleep, if I fall asleep, asleep. yeah, and I'm, I'm not. I'm sleepy so much as I'm just um, just feel yucky you know for lack of a better word yeah that's true all right let's go in and let's convert some kilometers to miles so I'll go in and I'll put these things and I'll click convert all right and down here it shows me this stuff all right let's go in and let's make an error What is wrong with this picture? It gave me a validation error, but it's potentially misleading because it shows me the old results. All right. Now, in this case, it's pretty obvious that that 
um, hey, you know, I know that I can't convert SDF, 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 and I know that that's not 6.85 miles. But in other cases, it would be um, perhaps um, essential to clear out the results. All right? So the question is, is where do I put the code to clear out the results if there's an error? I heard one answer that I like. Let's see if we hear another answer. In though. the properties? In the properties? I, yeah, I would say. That, 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 that shows that you've paid attention. <laughs> All right. So you get credit for that. Maintainability. Maintainability. No, I All would right. think you do it in the, the C sharp coding. Okay. So why, why, is, why is that not the right answer? Because it has to go to the server for the C sharp coding to run. Okay, so the question of where to put the code, it has to happen client side, right? Because the whole purpose of this validation is that um, it doesn't make it to the server side if there's an error. So anything we do server side <coughs> isn't going to work is doomed. We can stand on our heads and we can type the most elegant, beautiful code <coughs> in history. And I don't know what standing on your head would do to help that, but it wouldn't help that is the bottom line. All right? Because this doesn't make it to the server. That's the very problem here. And that's the way we want this to work. We want that win-win situation that when someone clicks the button, that it doesn't even bother the server unless the data is somewhat reasonable. All right, so this has to happen client side. So how do we make this go client side? Well, in order to do this, and, and this is one thing I encourage, and, and I got into a debate. I, I, was, I was scheduled to co-write a chapter in a book about ASP.NET to talk about the web stuff. And I spent a lot of time talking about the HTML that gets generated, the JavaScript that gets generated, and so on. And the author of the book didn't want me to do that. The author was like, well, this, is, this book isn't for web designers. They, shouldn't, they don't need to know what the HTML is. Yes, they do. If you don't know and you don't understand the HTML and JavaScript and how all that stuff works, then stuff is going to be a complete mystery to you. So what we have to do is we have to put something on this text box, let's say, to clear out the answer if there's an invalid entry. Now we can do this a couple of different ways. In order to do it, I'm going to look up JavaScript um, text box events. Oh my god, just use Bing. To search? Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> All right. Here are some choices. Oh, these are common HTML events. Let's look specifically for the text box. Here's a, here's a bunch of events. Good, good, good. Good, except it doesn't have the one I want. Maybe on the next page. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, let's try this one.
were going to spend the rest of the hour watching me search through Google. Oh, this is just part of the SDLC, that's all. Okay. All right, here we go, yay. There's a whole list of events that we can call, all right? And we can write JavaScript for these events that we can control. And depending on the element, there's different events that we can call, all right? Now, this depends on when we want to write the code to clear out the answer, all right? I could clear out the answer, and well, let's evolve this. Let's do this in a couple of steps. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write code to clear it out, clear out the answer when they click the button. All right? So when they click the button, even if there's a validation error, it's going to clear that out. All right, let's go and look at that. So I can look at my control. One of the attributes on the button is on on client click. <laughs> All right. There is an on click method two, but that relates to the server control. So this relates to what happens when it makes it back to the server. I want on client click, all right? Because I want this code to happen when on the client side when they click. So I'm going to write a JavaScript function that says clear results. Now, for those of you that don't know or aren't familiar with JavaScript, just sort of take this in. Because at some point you will learn JavaScript, or you ought to learn JavaScript. And just follow the techniques that I'm doing, all right, um, for, um, for, uh, for this. So I call a JavaScript method called clear results. I'm going to go and I'm going to put in the head a JavaScript function. be done in C sharp. Well, it could be done in C sharp, but it wouldn't run until it hit the server. Okay. And because the validation keeps it from hitting the server, what we would do would be useless. So, but we could technically just run all of our validation then on the server, couldn't we? We would, we could, but why would we want to do that? Yeah. We lose the advantage that client-side scripting offers us. Right. And that is, if we have a mammoth form with hundreds of fields or dozens of fields and we go to submit it and they forgot to put in their zip code, we don't want the server to do a bunch of processing and say, hey, you forgot your zip code, when that could just as easily or better be handled on the client side. Right. It's a win for the client because they get an immediate answer. It doesn't have to go through the Internet. And it's a win for the server because the server doesn't want to be bothered by data that can't be processed. So you always want to do as much as you can in you you want to you, you want to do the validation that you can on via client side scripting. Okay. All right, additional validation and redundant validation will happen on the server too. So what I really want to do is I want to clear out, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out. I'm going to cheat a little bit so I don't have to clear out so I don't have to 
clear out individual items at a time. <coughs> I'm going to make a div so I only have to clear out the one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I hate that too. So I have to write the JavaScript statement to clear that out. And the JavaScript statement to clear that out is document find element by ID get element by ID. Those of you in my Android class understand what I ju did just there. And I'm going to find that thing. What's the ID of it? All results. And what am I going to do with it? I'm going to set the inner HTML equal to nothing. So I'm clearing it out. Get element ID is a JavaScript function. It's a built-in function, and it allows us to point to something on the page. All right, point to something that's within the browser, and then we can once we point to something on the browser, we can do stuff to it. It's very similar in concept to what we do in our C# -sharp code behind. Right, we point to something on the page, we point to a control, and then we do something to it. Well, here the difference is is we're not preparing a page; we are dealing with a page that's already been loaded in the browser. So I say, hey, somewhere on the web page, find the thing that's called all results. And what about all results? Set the inner HTML property of it. That is everything between the start and end tag. Set it to nothing. <coughs> so effectively it clears it out. So now let's go and run this and test it. So I go and I type in good numbers. I get my results. I go and type garbage in and click. And boom, it gets cleared out. I put good numbers in. I get results. I put garbage in. It clears it out. Now, that might be what you want it to do, right? Because it, it, won't, it won't display those misleading results. But you might want to do it a different way. What's another way that we could do this? Pardon me? That's a reasonable way to do it. Again, the, um, this would be one way to do it. The, the other way to do it um, would relate to putting it on a different event. For example, as soon as I change the value of that, these results are invalid. So if I took a screenshot of that, that's incorrect. Right? So, the question is, is what event do I have to, to write? Would that be on focus on the text? Well, we could do on focus, or we could do on key down, or on key up. These are all JavaScript events, which I think is still in... which is one of the methods that we can have. Now, the problem is, is that there is no ASP.NET property for all of the events. There is a property for on client click, because the developers of ASP thought, gee, it's pretty likely you might want to slide some JavaScript in when they click a button. but 
they have not accounted for the fact that maybe when you press a key in the text box, you want to do some JavaScript. Now, the good news is, is we can code that anyhow. All right? So I can go in here, and on the text box, I could say on key down equals clear results. So I'm going to remove that code from the button and put it here. I can say on key down clear results. All right, let's run this. I go in here, and boom, I start typing, and it changes it. Go in here, and boom, start typing, it changes it, or it clears it. Now, that's one option I could do. The other thing I could do is I could put other events here. For example, I could put on focus. What does on focus mean? Well, that's what focus is, is when the cursor goes in that box. So on focus doesn't mean to bring the focus in the box. It says when this box gets focus, do this. So in other words, I could do this. I type in the values. Boom, as soon as I click in there, before I even make any changes. Now this is a case of, again, the technical part of web design and web programming <coughs> and web development versus the design aspect. <coughs> Which of these solutions is the right solution? I can't say. In fact, I could argue that how it was originally isn't bad. You type garbage in, you don't clear out the results. It's pretty obvious that it's garbage in there, so the results aren't accurate. You could make that argument. Or you could say, well, gee, it's a, it could be a little confusing to the user, so I want to clear out the results if they click the button. Or I want to clear out the results once they start changing it. Or I want to clear out the results even when they go in to get the focus of it. The good news is, is we should be able to know um, different ways to do it and understand the JavaScript events and so on. The key thing to remember about this exercise and why this, this, um, why this is particularly interesting is that it really shows um, and really gives evidence of the way that the client and server interact. In other words, in the way those validation controls work. Those validation controls run off the server which means that you can't write server-side code. Uh, let me rephrase that. The validation controls, except when JavaScript is disabled, which is a rare occurrence, but those validation controls run on the client side. I think I said server-side a second ago. All right? They run on the client side, which means that any code that you write on the server is going to be useless because they ain't making it to the server if there's an error. Therefore, it needs to be addressed via client-side code, and here's an example to do that. Same thing, for example, that you have when you do Twitter. Uh, any of you who have done Twitter, you know that it keeps a countdown of the number of characters you have. So, like, you have 140 characters that you can type in the little box. As you start typing, um, it counts it down and tells me how many you have left. And, in fact, it even changes the... The, the appearance of the countdown is you get closer to zero characters left. And I think it changes it again when you get, when, when you've typed more than 140 characters in. All right? I don't know what technology is used for Twitter. I don't know if it's a PHP or Python or ASP.NET or what. But you can bet that that is done client side. Because you don't want that to happen, have to happen on the server. All right? 
That's something that you'd want to do via client-side code. Question about any of this. The interesting thing here about this is that notice again, the source that gets generated, even though that, strictly speaking, was not a ASP.NET property, I can put my own property in on that text box that says on focus. So I don't see that on my list. I don't think I see that on my list of ASP.NET events. All right? Because it's not a server-side events. Those events that I see listed here are, are the server-side events that I can write code for. I do, however, have the ability to add it, and it just gets, if the server doesn't know what to do with it, it just passes it on to the client, and the client can handle it. Questions about this? Going once. All right. It looks so easy when you do it. <laughs> well, you know, I was going to say something, but it, it would sound egotistical, and I don't, I don't mean it to be egotistical. They should do a JavaScript course. Here. Well, there kind of is, CISS-232, but that does other stuff, too. Oh, really? Yeah, it does, it does PHP and it does AJAX. Um, and, of course, it's introduced in the CISS-216 class. As far as it looking easy, you know, I mean, the only thing I could say is, you know, if you do something long enough, it should at some point get easy. Yeah. All right? Um, in other words... Some students, and I hate to blow your illusions, but like if I detect an error on your code, they think it's because I'm brilliant. Really, no, it's because I made that error or similar errors 10 million times in the past. So I, I can recognize it. What does someone say? Experience is to uh, uh, the ability to recognize a mistake after you've made it or something like that. Did you, so. did you happen to put the link for this course? Uh, no, in HTML, you put a link for the, what was it? I think it's W3C or it's. Yeah, W3C where you can put your HTML and CSS code into the box and it'll check. I, I don't, oh, uh, I, to the validator? Yeah. I don't believe I did, okay. largely because the the Visual Studio sort of validates it anyhow. Oh, oh So, okay. like, for example, if oh, I, yeah, if, you put the wrong thing if I put, the let's say, a div tag here in the head section, gives me a little curly line that says, hey, you can't have a div inside the head. Or if you don't have the closing tag. Or you don't have the closing tag or whatever. Yeah. All right. I almost forgot where we left off last time. I almost jumped ahead. You were going to start with the class. going to start or... making a class. That's I right. I was going to say something about that problem that I had with my, when I put the five in instead of the Ah, ones. very good. That's another, that's another thing that I have to talk about. Let's put a range validator on one of these guys. In fact, I'm going to turn off the screen for a second so you don't see what I did. No. <laughs> it's like it's in a homework assignment coming up or something. And nothing up my sleeves. <laughs> and you're not allowed to answer. I won't say anything. <laughs> okay, no spoilers. I'm going to put a range validator for the second text box.
let's say it has to be between 1 and 200. So I've added a range validator and I made the message must be between 1 and 200 and I made the maximum value 200 and the minimum value 100. And that always confuses me the maximum is above minimum but hey, alphabetical order. So now I go and run this. And I put it on the second text box only. So I go in and I put this is 20 miles, let's say, and I put this is 10 miles or 10 kilometers. Now that works. It's in the range. All right. I put 143 miles. Yep, that works. It's in the range. I put in 50 miles. Must between be between 1 and 200. Huh? Huh? No. In there. no. Let's look at the validation control again. I'm validating the right text box because control to validate is text box 2. It is a range validator and the maximum value is 200 and the minimum value is 1. So it worked some of the time. It worked for, for, for 12 or whatever I typed in, 143 didn't work for 50. What's going on here? Is it looking at the first number, maybe? Is it looking at the, what do you mean looking at the first like, number? You have 1 to 200. Okay. I mean, it's, I don't know, no, that doesn't make sense. I think, I think, I, I think I hear what you're saying. I just want you to think so 50, this through. So 1 to 200, so like, it looks at the 5 and the 50 and thinks it's, Okay. Anyone care to add to that? I will say that you are getting warm. Does it look at it on the server side and on the client side and fail validation in one place but not the other? It will look at it at both sides and near as I know it would work consistently. So that that's not that's not the issue. Is there a property not set correctly? <laughs> is there a property not set correctly? I like that answer. Yes, there is. So we're okay. We're we're we have some idea that maybe it's comparing the first number. Uh, I will say that that there is truth to that. The second thing I would say there's truth to is that there's a property set wrong. Well, I deliberately am not showing which property oh. is is there. <laughs> well, here's the idea. When do you do comparisons based on fir on the first character as opposed to numeric values? When you're alphabetizing things, right? In other words. If I look at this, Davis is between Adams and Smith, right? How do I know that? Well, I'm going to compare the first letter, and I'm going to say D is greater than A, greater when you're talking about letters being further down in the alphabet, and D is less than S. How do I know that? Well, S is further down still in the alphabet. Now. 
the first number and says it's higher than two. Yeah. So Downing. One or two. Davis. All right. Is this between it? No. How do you know it's not between it? Well, the first character is even, so you've got to go to the next character for the tiebreaker. And in that case, A is not greater than O. A comes before the alphabet. You have it set to only validate the first digit? Yeah. Like a case set or like a... Does it work that way with numbers? I would think so. Really? No. Should it work that way with numbers? Is 50 between... 100, 1, and 200. The first line, though, is not, 5 is not between 1 and 2. It goes off the same logic as letters. The okay. first one is not right, So you have to change it from, uh, from alphabet to numeric and all that. Exactly. The property that's wrong is I've specified the wrong data type for this. You compare things differently if you're comparing numbers versus strings. If you compare strings, you do that alphabetizing method where you look at the first character. Look at the second character. Look at the third character. With numbers, you look at the numeric value of it. All right. So 50. If I treat if I treat these things as strings, then 50 is outside of the range because five is further down the number alphabet than two is. If, however, I treat these as numbers, then yeah, the numeric value of 50 is between one and 200. So. There's a property for that. Uh, well, what I said from the very beginning. Exactly. And that property is type. So I had the type set as a string, which would cause it to do string-like comparisons to determine if it's in the range. If I simply change that to Duble. integer or double. Because I may go 50.1756. Right. Exactly. Then I should be okay. So I put in 3, put in 50, and it works. Now, what does this point to? And believe me, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not picking on you here. All right. What, you, you're, you're, and do you mind me talking about this? No, no, okay. Right. You came in and said it worked on Monday or whatever, or worked yesterday, it's not working now. All right. And again, if I had a dollar for every time a developer or a student and even professional developers told me that, then I would have a lot of dollars. All right. Because developers always think that somehow their code goes bad, that it had a rough night or it, 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 it was up late or it slept in or whatever, the, your, your USB drive got too close to a, a magnet or whatever, somehow the code got bad. Very rarely is that the case. Typically what the case is, is that it wasn't thoroughly tested enough. All right, That calls the need for a, um, to have what I would call a test plan. All right, Now that one would be hard to anticipate. Because you're liable to think, hey, I put in 15 values, but they just happen to fit the right criteria, you know. Um, and you would think that it would work. But testing is something that even experienced developers, in my opinion, don't do a good job at. And the reason it is is because usually they just pound on the keyboard and just randomly pick some numbers and give it a shot. All right. Um, it's good to have some sort of testing plan, and it's good to test rigorously your code. All right, we'll talk more about this throughout the uh, semester. The key thing here is, again, I'm going to use the word that I used when I talked about debugging, to take a systematic approach. What do I mean by a systematic approach? It means think it through and try to do it in some sort of logical manner as opposed to just taking a shot at it. All right? The corollary to this is 
the thing I heard all the time when I worked in consulting is, it works on my machine. That's a classic. That's a classic. <laughs> and it's so funny because, especially, yeah. That excuse worked for me the other day, though. Okay. It, it shut now. <laughs> Not in the, and it won't in this class. Um, and it's funny how earnest sometimes, especially inexperienced developers are. And they say that as though that that solves a problem. It works on my machine. You know, why do I care that it doesn't work on the actual web server that people from around the world are going to access? It works on my machine. I did it right. That's someone else's problem. Well, not really. All right. If you can arrange for everyone in the world to come and use your machine when they want to visit a website, then I'll take that as an excuse. But until then, <laughs> fix it so it works everywhere. All right. So. We have this page, which has grown to be kind of a monstrosity, all right? Let's say I want to convert, let's say I want a, a, a page that will do conversions based on standard race lengths, convert from kilometers to miles. Um, there are, for example, there are 5Ks, 10Ks, and 30Ks, and there's probably more Ks than that, but we'll stop at that. All right. So let's say I had a racing page that I wanted to do this conversion. And it, it was, I didn't want to really like let the person type in the length. I just want to have a nice set of radio buttons. Say 5K, 10K, 30K, show me how many miles it is. So let's go and let's build that page. So not this page, but a second page. Yes? Um, are you going to put this lecture on Angel, for chance? Yeah, I, I probably will. Because I have to get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will. I, I normally always do that with the exception of last Wednesday's mobile web development class, which was a hot mess. So I pretended, I didn't pretend, I just said, I ain't posting this one. Sorry. <laughs> I do that maybe once a semester. Yeah. So we're probably good. Thank you. All right, new file, web form, and I'm going to call this race calc, because we're going to be calculating the length of races. Sorry, we should put right now, Jesse, you need to say code word blue if you watch this. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that is a good idea. That is a really good idea. Jesse, if you watch this. You need to tell us, code word is, is blue. All right. And we'll, let's see if he, if he says anything. Sounds good. All right. I'm going to put a radio button list on here. And it's going to have my lengths. All right. And I'm going to enter the items. And I'm going to say there are 5Ks. I'm going to make the value just a 5 instead of 5km. Why? Because I want to use that in a calculation. Someday I'll tell you how I beat my daughter in a 5k race. Actually, I'll do that now. Say Pardon me? I was about to say someday. Why not now? Yeah, why not now? Right. Um, I, I did it by, I was so far behind the pack that I lost the race route. I had no idea where I was supposed to go. So I turned where I thought I was supposed to go. And as it turned out, it probably eliminated half a mile from it. So I ended up cutting back into the middle of the pack. Oh and I ended up like, Showing it up, uh, up uh, before she did. What race was this? This was the. This was a few years back. This was for a police officer that was killed oh, in line of duty, the Kerstetter. Okay. Yeah, race in. I did that a couple years. My daughter knew uh, their daughter. My daughters knew their daughter, so we we did that race. All right. So I got my drop down. Or I'm sorry, my radio buttons. I have my label for the results. I 
I'm going to go and put my on click event. Alright. And I'm going to say double km equals radio button list one dot selected value. I can't do that. Why? Because that is a string. So what do I say instead? though for that. Why do I still have to do it as a string? Uh, convert to string? Because the property is still a string. I could conceivably through my code change those numbers because we've seen we can change anything about the page. So I could change conceivably change those to something else. So I have to do the conversion because that property allows there to be a string in there. Okay, so I have the kilometers now. What's my calculation for miles? equals km times 0.625, I think, was the number we were using. The mere fact that I am saying I think it was the number we are using, maybe it was 0.62. That kind of rings a bell. And then I can put in my label results. The results label, I can put in miles to string. All right. You're right about the point six two. I go with it. Okay. So let's go and let's run this page. So, a 5K is 3.1. Sounds about right. A 10K I know is 6.2. I always remember that one. 6.2. A 30K should be 18.6. And it's that. Let's go to my other page. And let me, let me put in 10, 30, and 5. Actually, I get 6.25. I did, and I, I knew I did. I lied when I said I remembered it as, as, as 0.62, right? So what do we have here? We have a slight inconsistency. They're both right. The one's just a little more precise than the other one. Inconsistency is bad, all right, on a website. If you're going to show something, you're going to do, use one number for a calculation in one place, you shouldn't use a, the, a different number for the calculation in a different place. And if we look at this, we have duplicated code. All right? We have this calculation done in two places, which means that if I got this wrong, if I typed in 0.61 on both pages, I have to go back and correct both pages. I would have to make sure that it was consistent, that I used the same amount of precision, and so on. So I have this code, this calculation, and again, keep in mind, in this case, it's a simple calculation. But in other cases, it could be a more complex calculation. And instead of one line of duplicate code, I could have a bunch of lines of duplicate code. So I have a case of duplicate code. I have a case of duplicate code. Thank you. And that should cause you to scream, much as the magic word in Pee Wee's Playhouse made you scream. All right? So the point is, is I can't reuse as good as this code is. It's pretty simple code, but as good as it is, the problem with it is I can't use it on another page. 
because this code lives in this code behind. And I can't use that function on another page, or I can't easily use it. What if it was said public? So Even if I said public, I would, it would be problematic to do that. Okay. All right. It wouldn't be as straightforward as it should be. What we really want to do is we want to put it in its own place. Now, if you've been paying attention at all in any of my classes, you see that that is a solution in many cases because of maintainability. Why do we separate HTML and CSS? So that we can share that CSS between many pages. So that if I want to change the overall appearance of the site, I don't have to change 20 web pages, I change one CSS file. Why do we create functions? Well, so I could call that a couple different times from that first page. So we separated the code out. We're always separating things out into their little individual components so we can mix and match those components as we need. All right. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a component to do distance conversions. We're going to create a distance conversion class. Now, the Microsoft framework for ASP.NET contains a bunch of classes that are used in a variety of different web applications, right? Validations. Every web application you can think of is going to have some kind of validation in it. All right? Um, database interactivity. Just about all web applications that you can think of are going to have some database uh, interactivity. So the things that are very common, that are going to be done a bunch of times, we are going to put, or they put rather, in the framework. But they didn't do everything for you. Every company has their own sort of shipping calculation, how much they charge for shipping and handling. Every company has their own calculation for other things as well. So they can't do your whole job for you. You have to go and you have to fill in the stuff that is distinct for your organization or, put differently, the stuff that's not in the framework. So. The example here is there's no distance conversion built in the framework, so we're going to build our own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own file that this function can live in. And what's more, if I was going to expand this, I could do from feet to inches, to inches to feet, to feet to yards, to inches to yards, to inches to kilometers. I could do any sort of conversion, length conversion, distance conversion function I wanted to, I would put them all in the same place. So that this class that I'm going to create is going to be my one-stop shop for converting distances from one thing to another. All right. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to say File, New, File. And I'm going to create... a class. And I'm going to give it a name. And the name should be something descriptive. In other words, if you call your class class 1 for your homework assignment, you should hope that I'm in a good mood when I grade it. All right? Because it should be descriptive. You shouldn't have to memorize that class 67 is your your shipping class or whatever. So, I'm going to say distance conversion, because that's what this class does. So, I'm going to put everything that my system needs to know about distance conversion in this one place. So, if I need to do any distance conversion, this is a guy to go to. I'm going to plug it into my page. Think of this as being sort of like a code behind without a web page associated with it. And the advantage of that is I can then use this any place I want. So I click Add. It's going to give me a message saying, mm, you're probably better off if you put it in the app code folder. All right. Hasn't lied to me yet, so I'm going to trust Visual Studio and say yes. I now have the shell 
of a class. It gives me sort of my starting point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my function, I'm going to move from, I'm going to move the function from here, and I'm going to put the function in here. We wrote this function pretty well the first time because all it needs is the argument and it returns the results. This function was written with the thought in mind that it doesn't matter where we get the miles from, a text box or a drop down or a radio button or whatever, tell me the number of miles and, I, or I'm sorry, tell me the number of kilometers and I will tell you the number of miles. So it doesn't matter where we get those kilometers from. This function is a black box. In other words, you give it the input, you get the output. Anyone using this function doesn't even need to worry about the way the calculation is done. All right? So we have this in here. Now, however, we have to change this guy because this guy no longer knows about that convert to miles function, convert cam to miles. All right, doesn't know about it because we've moved it out of this page. It now lives as part of the distance conversion class. So what I have to do is I have to point to that class. I have to actually make an, an instance of this class that I can use to do the calculation. So I'm going to say distance conversion. So I can make a distance conversion class just like I can make a double or anything else. Now that I've defined it, this is what a distance conversion is. It's a component like any of the other components. I can drop it in wherever I need it. So distance confer, uh, uh, conversion DC equals new distance conversion. Alright, so now I've hooked up this code with this page. And I can say the function convert km to miles belongs to that distance conversion class. So, I can call it. I forgot to make it public, though. That's the one thing I do have to do. All right, now I should be okay. At least after I save everything. So, there's actually something going into that web config file to tell all these pages that that distance conversion is out there? You know what I mean? Is that where that information goes? Not really. No. In other words, the question is, is how does it know that right. there is something called a distance conversion? It knows because if we go out and look, Oops, wrong one. If we look, there's an app code folder, and in the app code folder is this class called distance conversion. So, so it knows based on the fact that this lives in the app code folder that that is code that's available to be used here and elsewhere. So. What I do, in a nutshell, I move the function to this class, which is a component. In, in Power Builder, which is a client server language I used ages ago, and if eight years ago is recently, ages ago is how long ago is that, right? 
But they called these things non-visual objects. And I kind of like that, because there's nothing dealing with the appearance here on this page. It's a non-visual object. It is code, but it's not attached to any window or, or any, any page. All right. I can then point to that code by creating an instance of that object, and I can call that method. Now what I can do is I can do the same thing on my other page. IntelliSense even knows about the function. And I can call it and give it um, the value in kilometers. It's going to do the calculation, return it, and I think I got, I think I deleted my double for miles somewhere in here. There we go. And then we convert it to a string. So again, notice what the event handler does. The event handler still doesn't do much on its own. What does it do? It does those same things that were on the board last time. It gathers the input, and it does whatever co uh, conversion is necessary. Okay? So in this case, it grabs the kilometers from the radio button. It then does any formatting. It does a conversion. It calls the function. Now the difference is, here that function lives in an outside file. So we first have to point to that class before we can call the function. So we point to that class, we create an instance of that class called DC, so we can now use that to call the function. We call the function, then we do something with the results. And again, in this case, like the other one, I'm just putting the results in the label, but from what we saw last time, I could put the results, I could do a lot more with the results if I wanted to. Alright. Now if we run this, notice it's doing the calculation in a consistent manner now. And if, let's say, we started out with the conversion as being 0.62 and run it, it does a conversion based on 0.62 on this page and also on this page. Now, if I come in and say, wait a minute, 6.2 is not, can be a little more precise, so I can go 6.25. Now, if I run it, both pages get the benefit of that change. So if there's a bug, or if Again, this wouldn't happen with kilometers to miles, but if it was something like shipping rate or postal rates, it could change. If I make the change, it's going to be everywhere in the application, as opposed to just being in one place. So we've kind of gone a long way here. And each step involved breaking things out. We started with all our code on the button. The problem with that is we would have to repeat code then to handle other text fields or drop downs or whatever. We pulled it out and made a function for it. And that worked fine as long as we were talking only about one page. But once you bring in a, another page then, you're still going to end up with duplicate code unless you go and create a custom class for it. 
All right, at this point, again, there's a lot more you can do with classes. This is not meant to be um, a comprehensive description of class. And from what I understand, in the advanced C-sharp class, they cover classes a lot more, and also in the Java programming class, probably the Android class as well. Um, almost any of the more advanced programming. And I think some in the intro. I'm not really sure how much in the intro. Much. Doesn't go over that much? Okay. But you can do a lot more with these things. I just did a simple example just to show the principle and the idea. And when you learn more about classes, then you'll learn more stuff that you can do. The idea, again, is you make these classes for your business rules. So you can do these things, all right, that aren't built into the framework and that save you a lot of time and allow for more reusable and more maintainable code. Any questions about this? All right. Next time, we are going to start talking about the things that we can do to make your UI more reusable. We've done a lot to talk about making CSS more reusable and, and all that, so we've covered that aspect of the UI. We've talked about code here. The next thing we're going to do is start talking about things like, what if I have a template of what every page on my site is supposed to look like? Do I have to duplicate that template in every ASPX page? Fortunately not. So we'll go over that next time.